Hello and welcome to Infinity. I've got here a new color model. And the idea of color models is that you split up the image according to some criteria and then recombine them so you see the original image and then you can edit those separate parts because you're putting them on separate layers. In other words, get to bits you could not get to otherwise and so you get added new ways of editing an image. So this is one pixel where red is high, green is low and blue is in the middle and that positioning is how we're going to use them. Because when they combine together they can look something like this and if I bring over the colour controls here I can say this is the colour of combining these three because the red's the highest, the green's the lowest, blue's there in the middle. And the highest one here, we can call it the dominant one or the maximum. When I change this, it's just going to be colours of red. Yeah, as long as that's clearly the dominant one, that really controls the overall perceived colour. The second one down here, the blue in this case, this is the supportive one or the middle colour. And moving this changes the red more, but still pretty much red wherever you go. And the green one has a more subtle effect. The overall tone, the overall colour changes very little, just how light and dark it is. So it gives you quite a useful way of controlling things. And each of the, the top one, the middle one, the bottom one, or I say the max, the middle, and the min, which gives you the 3M dominance model. Or you could say the, the dominant model here, dominant colour, the supporting colour and the recessive colour. Use whichever you want to talk about. Let's have a look at this in a actual image. So I've got it here and I've split them down already here and explain how to do this in another video because it's quite complicated and you don't necessarily need to know it because I am going to give you some macros in a later video which I explain it but right now just looking at what it is. So I've alt click on one of these and I can see there that these are the dominant colours. I've split them out into red, green and blue. If I click on the next one down these are the secondary supportive colours and you can see this here this is messy but down here it's quite clean. And when you get clean things like this, they're really good for using a selection. You can turn these into masks quite easily and use them to select areas. Some images it works well with, others not. And some layers it does and doesn't. So here this is the, the minimum one, the recessive one. So I say blue is, is the not much down here at all. Which again is interesting and useful when you're looking at how you are going to edit and adjust colours. So let's go up here just for a moment. I'll, I'll click that one here and see if there's red in the sky. You don't always expect red to be the dominant colour in the sky, but it is here. If we go up to here and drag this over here, you can see if I go into that area, see red is 198, green is 192, blue is 194. Not a lot of difference. They're close together, which is why it looks pretty much monochrome, but the dominant colour is still red. And that might be important in your colour control and you might want to work on bringing down the reds or rebalancing somehow or white balancing that. So that immediately gives you information and shows you where to look. Without doing that, I wouldn't know where to put this you know, thing here right now. I can also do things if I just turn off the others here so I can just seeing that. I can, if I say go to the curves here, now I can control them separately because if I choose the red, green or blue curve, now I'm going to very, very clearly find areas in this layer. Remember those layers all still combine together again. So we're changing the dominant red, green or blue. So if I can go to the red here, if I pull this up or down, I am changing those reds. I can go to the green, say, and drop that to zero, the blue, and drop that to zero. I'm starting to get a mask, and if I want a solid mask, 
I can go to the red and pull the top one to the right. And now we've got solid colours and I can turn that into the mask. All the way to the right, please. There we go. There's the solid colours. And I can then use those. If I look down here, here where this says the composite red here, because that is a copy of this. If I right click on that and say load to pixel selection, I've now got a selection in that area and I can then use that or I can do it in other ways. But I can easily turn that into masks. I can easily say do selections. I can vary them. I can put feathering on the edge of them. So it does quite a lot. So control D just to get rid of that. So our five minutes, which I try to keep things to, are well up. But well, that's a quick overview of the colour dominance model, the 3M model. I'm going to go do more about this in future videos, but that's the basic introduction. Thank you very much for watching.